about from being a rookie here to trials and tribulations you went through, and here you are with your number about to be retired by the left. It, it means a great deal. The thing about it, uh, growing up in Tampa, like, like Gary, you know, playing baseball in the backyard, sometimes playing one-on-one, -on -one, you never dream about having your number retired. You talk about maybe playing the big leagues one day, maybe one day winning the World Series, but you never talk about having your number retired. Um, so for this day to happen, and it happened with the team that I was drafted by, I look back at where I started, you know, in 82, and Joe McAvain, who drafted me. Um, it's definitely a dream come true, something that I never thought would possibly happen. You think you have an opportunity. Um, the things I did on the field, I thought I always had a chance. But unfortunately, the struggles I had off the field, I thought it diminished that, that it probably wouldn't happen. So last year, when I got the call from uh, Steve Korn, was definitely surprised um, a little bit, but then I had to take a deep breath back um, and just suck it in. Obviously, you get you know teared up a little bit. Situation where you want to share, share with your dad, but unfortunately, he's not here. But I get the opportunity to share it with my kids, my grandkids, great grandkids, <laughs> and, and my family, and that's what it's all about. You know, sharing those things that, and so many people, the fans that helped me get to that point. So I look at it not just a retirement. I look at it more as a celebration. This is the anniversary of your very first appearance as a Met way back in Houston. Could you talk about that first game, your emotions, the family, uh, what, what, any butterflies? What were you going through? Oh, man, I'd never been, well, I had some days, but that's probably one of the top five most, I would say, not scared, but nervous and excitement, <clears throat> um, anxiety that I ever had. You're making your first start. Obviously, you're happy you made it, but you're not sure if you're ready. You know, a year and a half, I was in high school. You know, you go another year before that in the backyard with Gary, throwing the ball around. Um, the mess was kind of to fly my parents in. And I remember, not to bore you guys with the story, but I had lunch with my parents at like 1 o'clock in the hotel. Um, I never had been to Astrodome before. I went to the front desk to find out how far the Astrodome was. They told me it was about three miles. I ended up walking to the ballpark, if you guys hadn't heard the story. Walked to the ballpark, and when I got there, I didn't know how to get in the gate. Eight-foot gate. I'm climbing the fence to get in. <laughs> True story. Now the security guards come, and they're like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm Dwight Gooden. I'm pitching. Like, they're like, sure you are. You know? <laughs> Luckily, our trainers were there, Steve Garland, and um, I think Bob Sykes was the trainers then. They came and, you know, said it was okay. I had to show my ID and got me in. And now I'm pitching. The first thing I go out to pitch, and I see my dad and my mom sitting there in the stands. See my parents sitting in the stands, you know. It was me, me playing professional baseball, and Gary would tell you, it was my dad's dream at first. It was my dad's dream at first that became my dream. And to see my parents sitting in the stands, seeing the joy on their face. And I remember Bill Doran grounding out the second. Um, I want to say Terry Poole grounding out the second. And then I got Dickie Thunder strike out. Walking off the field after that first strike out, that's when you feel in confidence. You know, you get a little swag and you walk at the time. And um, just to see the joy more so on my dad's face um, meant everything to me. Um, unfortunately, the next start in Chicago, I got knocked out in the third inning. <laughs> so you go from saying that you think you're ready to the next start, you're not sure if you're ready. Number 16, was that the number you wanted? Was that your favorite number? And talk about when you went to the Yankees, why did he fall off you his number 16? Yes, yeah, so that's going to be part of my speech today, but I'll give it to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give it to you guys. But we're going to fill, but you guys didn't hear it. So <laughs> um, I, I get drafted in '82. I go to Kingsport, Tennessee. Um, it was, my number was I like the number five. I like number ten. That's why I went in high school. But there's a guy, Russ Ork. I'll never forget this guy. He had been in, in rookie ball for like three years. Three years in rookie ball, and he was like, I don't care who you are. I know you want number ten. You're not getting it. And back then, if you draft like in the first couple of rounds, they call you bonus babies. He was like, I don't care who you effing are, your phone is maybe you're not getting my number. So I told the trainer, give me something close to 10, but not 13. Um, he gave me 16. So I took 16, and next year I go to A-Ball. I'm in Lynchburg. 16 was a fellow, but I stayed with 16. 84, obviously, I make the team. Spring training, I'm wearing number 64. I make the team. 
and we have a workout before we open up in Cincinnati, I believe. And I go to my locker, and it's number 35 hanging out with Gooden on the back. And so I see nobody's got 16. And I remember once I made a team, Frank Cashin, the general manager, told me if I got any problem with anybody, just come see him. And I went to, I went to, Charlie's, I went to Charlie's office. I said, Charlie, can I get 16? He was like, no, get out of here, kid. Just be happy you're on the team. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, like the sport kid I was, I went to Frank's office. I said, Frank, I want 16. Charlie won't give it to me. <laughs> Frank came down, told Charlie, give Doc 16. That's how I got 16. But come to find out, the reason why Charlie didn't want to give me 16 was because of Lee Mazzilli. <laughs> <laughs> Lee wore 16, and him and Charlie was good friends. Um, in 86, Lee rejoined the team. We got Lee, and I told Lee, you're 16. You have it back. He said, no, it's your number. It's you can have it now. Wow. And when I went to the Yankees, as you mentioned, Whitey Ford offered me to get 16, but there's no way I was winning 16 out there, Whitey Ford, so I had 11. <laughs>